um, let's talk, okay? Let's have a little talk. This is the bonus to the bonus stream, okay? Because I didn't even, I wasn't even sure I was going to stream today, but I had this urge and I got really nervous and I said, no, I'm going to push through the nervous urge and I'm going to get on the stream. I'm going to get in front of the camera and do it again. Oh, whoops. Um, but, yeah. Wow, I just burnt my finger. Ow, that hurt. Woo! Okay. So, um, let's talk about some of the things. What do you want to hear about? All right, everybody. Someone give me a hot take. Someone give me a hot take. Someone give me something that happened in the last couple of weeks that I can talk about, okay? I'm very glad I did this time. Who makes the music for the intro vids? That is Gayfesh. Bum, ba -da 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 -da. Professor Flowers. Okay, all right. You want to hear about the Professor Flowers thing? Okay. I did not watch that debate. Okay, so real quick. I didn't watch the debate, but let me give you my hot take anyway. Because I have a hot take, believe it or not, despite not having watched the debate. Okay, here it goes. Here's my hot take. Uh, I don't know anything about the conversation they had, but I did watch Professor Flowers' video. I have watched some of Professor Flowers' content, and they seem generally like a good faith person um and i think that high progressive made a very good decision in taking down that one clip because while a lot of people got very mad at the clip that sounded like uh, uh it was a bit of like a, a genocide gotcha thing uh i think that that is not how professor flowers intended for that to come out at all and i felt like it was a little bit unfair um, that said, uh, from what I hear, it seems that the, by the end of the conversation, a lot of progress was made, and that sounds really cool. I'm very happy to see that there is an actual effort by people to resist clip chimping. I've talked about that all the motherfucking time, and I'm very, very, very happy to see that people are actually starting to get a hold of it, because, um, it is very easy to clip someone, uh, making a mistake or wording something I imperfectly and then selling them as something very bad. Um, um, here's what I think. If you want my honest opinion about the question that was like, oh, do you think that um, that people should be able to genocide in the name of deco deco decolonization? That's ridiculous. That is a... The reason why I don't like that question and why I wish a different question would have been asked is because I don't think that that even... That isn't asking a... It's not a meaningful question. How do I explain this? Decolonizing is specifically anti-genocide. You can't decolonize. You can't genocide in the name of decolonization. That's like saying, are we going to have an anarchist state? That doesn't make any sense. You can't have an anarchist state. It Anarchists don't believe in states. Decolonizing doesn't... It, part of the decolonization process is resisting genocide. It is So it, it it's a nonsensical question. And, and the problem in the framing is... Uh, the problem is in the framing, okay? There you go. Simple. It's simple. It's like that, okay? It's in the- the problem is in the framing. You cannot have an anarchist state. Anarchists are anti-state, okay? Okay, next. Also on the self-determination dog whistle. Okay, okay, I, I can tell that, like, there's a lot of stuff here. Look, self-determination is really fucking important, okay? Listen, guys, like, in t unless, okay, let me just explain something. Do you know what, do you know, you know what, do you know what, do you know what, like, colonial nations have done? Let me, let me show you something. Hold on, let me, let me just look this up. Have you ever heard of what, uh, like, Leopold of Belgium did? Have you ever heard of this? We're just gonna read this real quick. We're gonna, just gonna, let me just, let me just, uh, let's just look into this. Here we go. I'm just gonna read you a little thing real quick. Get ready, okay? Here you go. Leopold amassed a huge personal fortune by exploiting the natural resources of the Congo. At first, ivory was exported, but this did not yield the expected levels of revenue. When the global demand for rubber was exploded, exploded attention shifted to labor-intensive collection of sap. Let's take a look here from some of the stuff. Estimates of the death toll range from 1 million to 15 million, since accurate reports were never kept. Historians Lewis and Stengers in 1968 stated that population figures at the start of Leopold's control are only wild guesses, and that attempts by E.D. Morrill and others to determine a figure of the loss were figments of the imagination. Um, in his book, King Leopold's Ghost, 
uh, there are problems with estimating the death, death, the death toll. Let's talk. Roughly half the population perished during the Free State period. Since the first official census by the Belgian authorities was in 1924, put the population at about 10 million, these various approaches suggest a rough estimate of a population decline of 10 million. At the turn of the ninth of the 20th century. Okay? Jesus fucking Christ. Do you understand what people are talking about when they talk about colonizing? Like, I'm sorry, but y'all need to really do some history learning on- on- We're gonna do some, in fact. Half- halved the population. The- the anti-colonial movement is one of the most justified movements of all. Like, it is so- like, oh yeah, look at this! You wanna see a picture? Look, I can show this picture. A father stares at the hand and foot of his own five-year-old daughter, severed as punishment for not harvesting enough rubber. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, let's take it easy when we're goofing around on the internet with our internet debates. I- you know- you all know I fucking love debate. You all know I'm a debatey bitch. I say this all the time. But can we take just a moment to just like take the, take our can we take our thinking pills for just a second and and think for a minute what we're actually talking about because colon, colonialism is so disgusting that you watching this show probably can't even imagine it okay that's all i'm saying i'm not saying i'm not i haven't watched the debate so i'm not cursing anybody all i'm saying is i wish that people online would take a fucking second I miss you so much. You're the voice of reason in this space. I know. I know. You missed your menku. I know. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm back, okay? And I'll be back even more in a greater capacity once my silly scheme is done that you all are going to love to shit. Well, I don't know. I can't speak to the actual debate. All I'm saying is that uh, colonialism, if there, was one, if there was one movement that I would say is most justified in violent reprisal is the decolonial the decolonial or the anti-colonization movement anti-colonization is so important colonization is a disgusting stain on the history of humanity truly okay yeah leopold literally invented death death camps yes okay next texas let's talk about texas no more of this nonsense we're doing texas next uh texas Okay. Hmm. Once upon a time, there was a video game made. A video game about a blasted wasteland full of mutants. Uh, a, a, um, a, a, video, a, a video game that was about horrible conditions, a, 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 a blasted wasteland of pollution, mutant monsters, hor horrific monstrosities, and that game was based on Texas. It's called Fallout, um, and it's based on Texas. They didn't know it was based on Texas, but it is basically Texas. Um, Texas is a giant land, of, uh, land mass uh, full of Democrats that is completely and utterly controlled by insane Republicans. And the sooner you realize that Texas is a nightmare zone that is essentially leading the the GOP strategy, you will realize that, that everyone, every Republican's goal right now is to turn the entire United States into Texas. They want the United States to be so gerrymandered that no matter what you do, you will not be able to make any effect on government. And they're succeeding, by the way. They're succeeding. Just just so you know. Um, what is going on in Texas can only be described as a dissolution of any sort of liberal democracy or illusion of liberal democracy. Okay? What about China and the video game Femboy Ban? Hey, guys. Here we go. Here's a hot take. Here's a real hot take. Okay, get ready. Get fucking ready. This is going to piss some people off. China is a conservative, regressive, fasc almost, or almost arguably fascistic state that masquerades as communist. It's never been communist. It will, at, it, in its current state, never be communist. It is a, uh, a, a, another power-hungry, 
construct just like the United States. So yeah, fuck that. Um, yeah, fuck that shit. Turns out, wow, weird. Almost turns out, almost it's almost like hierarchical power structures produce reactionary worldviews. Did you, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, it's funny. Something I've been reading a lot on. Something I've been reading a lot on is the state. You know, and it's very weird. States as a construct are designed to promote reactionary worldviews. They have to. States do not allow for deviance. They don't. You can't deviate now there might be different spectrums of the level that they restrict deviance but states always have to restrict deviance and as a result that window gets smaller and smaller any time that there's hard times and if there's hard times or tension or war you start to see the queer people go you start to see the people of minorities go oh vor buddy you're gonna love my reading list it's fucking great Why do they need to restrict deviance? Think about it like this. States are centralized entities. They require sucking up power. They require you to give yourself over to this construct, this imaginary thing. And it's inconvenient if people disagree with that imaginary construct. So states inevitably, to some degree or another, have to repress deviance. And as things get more tense, if there's an economic hardship, if there is war, if which there always is, if there are trade conflicts, whatever, they always get more and more aggressive because they need the deviants aren't productive. Those damn deviants who won't show up to work in the mines for the greater name of the state. Those damn deviants who won't sign up for the military in the name of our glorious state. You want to see a good movie that talks about this? Watch Grave of the Fireflies. Grave of the Fireflies is a movie that addresses this in a very, very real way. It talks about a society that has created a construct that erases people's ability to even care about one another, to care about the people that are right in front of them. In Grave of the Fireflies, two children constantly have the entire weight of the world put onto their shoulders by every single adult almost always in the name of the war effort, in the name of the greater good of a state. But the thing is, states don't actually exist. They are a construct. They are an illusion designed to get you to chain yourself to something that doesn't exist for the benefit of whoever happens to control that construct. And who controls that construct? Well, whoever the strongest person in the room is at any given moment. There you go. There you go. So I'm a federalist. I wouldn't describe myself as a federalist. You know what I am? I'm a menku. I am a tire of knots. I am a menku. One who knows the lines. Okay? That's what I that's what I am. Um, so, uh, yeah, borders are cringe. I agree. Uh, hey guys, here's another, here's a hot take. Ready? Here's a hot take. We're doing a speed run of the hot takes. Ready? You ready? Ah, baby boy. Wait, how should we be organized? Mm, mm. Let me tell you something cool about organization. Organization is an organic process. You talk to people, you make connections with people, you decide to do things together. And as it turns out, that type of organization is very valuable. People willingly coming together and doing things out of their own will, not being forced or, co or coerced into it is incredibly effective. Don't believe me? Go look at any open source community. Open source, open source, products have been kept alive with no profit motive whatsoever by a changing cast of interested individuals who are only involved as much as they wish to be look at modding communities nobody exchanges any fucking money in those modding communities outside of like if they raise donos to pay for their own bills and mods it's mods literally there are mods that make the game better than the AAA company that originally published the game. And that's because they're coming together non-coercively. Yeah, had the cavemen make tools without a profit motive. Hmm. Hmm. We are the bonds we forge. I agree with you. 
are courts a thing in an anarchist society? Uh, well, it depends on what you mean by court. Um, there are often, uh, there are a number of theories as to how you, uh, how you, um, solve issues between individuals. But as it turns out, communities are actually really fucking good most of the time at solving problems. Not always, but some, but, but very frequently. Communities that have healthy connections to one another can actually deal autonomously with their own problems. If somebody kills someone in a town, uh, in, 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 a, in a community, people know that person. They know what happened. There can be people who sit down and go, what the hell do we need to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? What about the ugly parts of labor? H ah, here we go, here we go. What about the ugly parts of labor? A lot of the ugly parts of labor are themselves a product of the conditions that we create. Look, I live in a household with a bunch of people. Uh, I have a lot of uh, like four people in our in our household and one dog. Okay? And all the chores get done. I yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. You know what I mean though. Pedant, but you know what I mean. Um I live in a household full of people and we solve the unpleasant tasks mutually. We talk it out. We say, "Okay, guys, like this shit that we don't like has to get done or else all of our lives get worse. Uh who's going to do it?" And then they do it. Um, there are ugly parts of labor. Yes, there are. There are jobs that suck. But guess what? A lot of those jobs people are willing to do, provided that they have a reason for doing it. In our, uh, in our society, you have to work or you die. People have to do things and they don't even know why they're doing it. How many, have you ever, has anybody listened to David Graeber's, uh, um, uh, bullshit jobs? If you want to understand the how miserable labor is largely bullshit, most of the miserable jobs that we think of are bullshit. Listen to David Graeber talk about it. David Graeber did a massive study on bullshit jobs, and it's very revealing. There's a video on it that's like 10 minutes long, and it's fantastic. You know how many bullshit jobs I've done in my life? You know how many bullshit jobs I've done for free? Yeah, don't be a work cuck. Look, work, I am an anti- You you all know this. I'm an anti-work person. Now, labor, there are labors of love. But work, work is bullshit. And, and yeah, there are people who love- I do a bullshit job. I go on the internet to have people yell at me and call me names. Have you all seen my comment section over the last couple of weeks? While I was gone, I didn't look at- I looked at my comment section two times before falling into a deep depression because I was getting literally dozens of comments just calling me a disgusting man. So, and I still do this. How would justice be proportional in an anarchist society if a local community were to carry out justice? Okay, think about it like this. Okay, okay, I want you to think about something. Okay, I'm gonna do something really big. We're gonna do a little brain experiment here, okay? Hold on a second. We're gonna do a, a real quick brain experiment. Let's imagine an anarchist society that has a, what you might determine a non-functional form of justice. Let's say someone kills someone else and there is no possible way to stop that person's family member from going and killing the person who killed the other person. Now you might say, damn, that is, that is probably not a good thing. And I agree. I don't think that that type of, of, of justice is particularly justice. It sounds like revenge to me. It sounds very punitive. But guess what? It's two people. It's two people sorting out their own fucking blood feud. Do you know what we have instead? We have a society that imprisons fucking hundreds of thousands of people in iron barred cages, ruining them forever. We have a society that punishes these people without letting them re-engage with society, locks them away under physical torture. And often in the case of like now, kills them because they're locked in a cage with a plague. So sorry, but I would rather have occasionally a society that, that sometimes doesn't know how to handle with somebody going and exacting revenge than a society that has a justice system that involves imprisoning in, in, iron cages and 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 solitary confinement and torturing on mass 
more people than you've ever met in your entire life. So there you go. I know one approach in Rojava involves having the family of a murderer make and share meals for the victim's family in order to build a social bond that lessens the likelihood of a blood feud developing. That can happen. And there's a lot more about this. I am not an anarchist theorist. I am not an anarchist theorist, but there are people who've written entire books about this, and there are non-anarchists who have written entire books about this. Did you know that? Look up, pr look up the prison abolition movement. Anarchists aren't the only ones who've talked about alternatives to this style of so-called justice. Uh, Louis Vuitton, I haven't watched the justice video, but ContraPoints is a liberal. It's just true. And ContraPoints believes that the state should have the right to throw people in an iron cage, and I don't. I do not believe that the state should have a right to throw people in an iron cage. I don't believe that, the, that a state should ever have the right to kill anyone. I don't believe in the death penalty. I don't believe in state imprisonment. Contra is a lib. It's, I like Contra points. I really like Natalie, but Contra's a lib. Contra believes in that, that it is justified for a state to put people in cages, and I don't believe that. Rehabilitative justice. Rehabilitative justice is not rehabilitative justice if you just rename the prisons uh, into schools, okay? I just, I just don't believe in that. Okay? You don't need to call yourself a, an anarchist. And here's the secret. Lena Lux, uh, Lena, you should DM me and I'll send you some stuff that will change the way that you think about anarchism. A lot of people think that anarchism is about some sort of mass, gigantic mass movement that involves organizing into an anarchist state. That's not anarchism. Anarchism is about autonomy, about liberation. It is about liberating communities and individuals. Yes, please DM me. I will gladly recommend some things for you. Um, yeah. Uh, I could, it's, it's not even, you don't even have, it's not even theory. It's easy reading. See, the funny, the cool thing about anarchists is anarchists hate to read. So, uh, that's not true, by the way. That's not true. But I don't. Uh, a lot of anarchists don't like to read, so they write things that are really short and really succinct. Uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, here's a fun, here's a, here's a wild thing. Uh, did you know that like, okay, so when people, uh, okay, here's something that, that gets me. When people talk about justice, they almost always go to the example of a serial killer. But on, on a pure level of statistics, serial killers are fucking rare. They're like an almost non-existent thing. There are so few serial killers that it, 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 it's, it's, it's a complete anomaly. The reality is that the vast majority of justice is carried out in such an idiotic way. Most people have reasons, even if they're the wrong reasons, they have reasons for the crimes that they do, for the things that they do that hurt others. And we can address those, look at those, understand those. It's really stupid to design an entire justice system off of the paranoia of serial killers in the 70s, which is our system. Yes, Vor Buddy, that's true. Most child molesters aren't pedophiles, uh, not in the traditional sense. They are there for a power imbalance. Um, and the funny thing is that uh, our our insane addiction to shame and guilt makes it uh, more difficult for people to get the help they need. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Joe Rogan. Oh, guys, we could talk about the ivermectin. God, the ivermectin is funny. Everybody's shitting out, literally shitting out their intense intestinal linings because, uh, oh, okay. Um, horse paste. Let's talk about horse um, paste. Yes, 80% uh, of the time that people take a full dose of ivermectin, uh, it will make men infertile. So don't fucking take that shit, okay? Was that a bad study? No, it was, uh, it's not, it's not been confirmed extensively, but the, the study that was done, it seems at least from what I have seen to be quite reliable. It's a small data set, but nonetheless. Ivermectin, uh, guys, doctors don't want you to take it because it's not, it, it has very, very limited applications. And mostly what it's going to do is shred your intestinal lining. And if you already have COVID, you're fucking dead. 
Um, yeah. Biden's va vac vaccination man mandate. Okay. Um, Biden's vax mandate is incredibly weak, but uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to comment on that. Uh, I don't like that. I don't generally like um, health related mandates from the government um, for a number of reasons, uh, but um, largely because they punish people who don't have access um, to care. Um, however, uh, Biden's mandate is is fucking toothless. Let's just put it that way. It was mostly designed to make Republicans freak the fuck out. Mm. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Um, a lot. Uh, probably at least uh, at least a cord. Um, at least a cord before he got before he got tired or or she got tired, I guess, or they got tired. Um, yeah. Um, it is a massive triggering. It, it's a button that makes the the conservatives freak the fuck out. Um, what else? What else happened? How do I feel about She-Ra? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, what's my favorite She-Ra character? I don't know. I think they're all pretty cute. Um, wait. Did you see Destiny has been tweeting about you multiple times today? He is obsessed. Wait, is he really? Wait, for real? He's still going about me? I've been gone for 20 days! What the fuck? What is wrong with him? Dude, I'm not kidding you. Guy is motherfucking obsessed. Just endless. It, he won't stop. It's the weirdest shit in the world. I, I, I've been saying this for nine months. He's banning all discussion of me? Good. Thank fucking God. Please. Holy shit. He wants a mommy. Listen, if Destiny wanted a mommy, he could just come ask, okay? <laughs> He's mad. This is based. Yo, this is so based. Why do they always accidentally meme me awesome? This is so based. What? This is awesome. Are you kidding me? This is a compliment. People joke about the eating bugs living in the pods, but have you looked around lately? The theater of security crawled into every aspect of our lives. Our neighborhoods are built with constant video monitoring and the exact same PA systems that we, that are used in prisons. I am so awesome that people have to put me in a video game to make my words sound even more awesome. They think that they're owning me. They think that they're owning me and they're only making my words more powerful. It's a compliment. It's unironically a compliment. Just straight up. Just straight up. Look, here. Let's talk about it. I want to talk about it. <clears throat> Let me go to my tweets, okay? Here we go. All right, let's look at this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. This is what I really wanted to talk about. All of this where were you never forget nonsense rings especially hollow this year. 2,461 people died in the United States yesterday. More will die today. It has been said that the plague is the measure of mankind. This organization of mankind has been measured and found lacking. I don't know how more clear this can be, okay? I don't know how more clear that this can be, you know? Like, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have um, a fucking, essentially a national holiday where everybody pretends to cry about a thing that happened 20 years ago that was, that was indeed a tragedy. Innocent people died because of the actions of the U.S. state, because the United States has been destabilizing countries and making enemies all over the world, and innocent people died as a result of that. It's a fucking good-ass tweet. Then I made another one, Okay. We're all drowning in alienation and isolation and dissociation, stirring feverishly in quarantines only necessary because of the calculated inaction of meticulously brutal state constructs. Most of us were children when this particular cage was built around us. Some of you are too young to remember. This is going to sound like uh, the most boomer thing I've ever seen, I've ever said, but some of you are too young to remember that literally you used to be able to go onto your plane 
in five minutes. You would go to the airport, you would walk through a very tiny metal detector, and you would get on your plane. Five minutes! It takes hours to get on a plane now. You would walk in, airports were chill. There were, you know what they would let you do? You could go in through security, eat with your family, watch the planes taking off, and then leave. You could pick up your family at the gate. And now we ha we live in literal, I mean, and, 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 and it's not just airports, it's everywhere. Uh, at my local Walmart, do you know what they have all over the Walmart, all over the parking lot? This is in a, 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 one of the most populous areas of Seattle. At the local Walmart, they have PA systems that are, they have these little, little trucks called lot cops, which have a PA system and a cluster of cameras watching in every direction. No one is fucking stealing things in the parking lot. Those cameras do nothing. They do nothing. And they broadcast these dystopian messages at all hours of the night that you can sometimes hear from my house across town. They're so loud. Saying, Walmart is with you in these hard times. Just remember, we're all in this together. We have built ourselves into a panopticon. And many of you weren't even around when we started building it. Then, I tweeted this one. People joke about eat the bugs, live in the pod. But have you looked around? The theater of security crawled into every aspect of our lives. Our neighborhoods are built with constant video monitoring and the exact same PA systems used in prisons. This is true. In my neighborhood, there are cameras on every building, there are camera towers, there are PA systems where if somebody thinks that you're being suspicious, they'll call the security company and the security company will go over the PA sometimes in the middle of the night and go, please leave the parking lot. You are a suspicious individual. Leave the parking lot. In my neighborhood, a neighborhood that has no fucking crime. He's mad because I'm awesome. That's the secret. The secret is, the reason why they're mad is because I'm awesome and I'm right. That's why. See, when I left, everybody forgot how many based ass fucking fire ass takes I have, but I'm right because I speak from fucking reality because it's really funny everybody on this fucking planet likes to say everybody on this fucking website likes to go touch grass touch grass i am the number one fucking grass toucher i know for a fact that i touch more grass than any of these motherfuckers because i go out all the time i go out to the fucking beach and go swimming in the ocean i go out to fucking mountains and climb them these motherfuckers do not touch grass and they constantly talk about everyone else touching grass they're mad because I'm fucking right. They're mad because I think and I actually put some fucking art into the shit that I create. Because I make things that sound cool and that are cool and that are correct. Anyway. This theater of security thing, I follow this up with the most important of all of them. Okay? Right here. Okay? The legacy of 9-11 is that these behemoths, these nations, these empires care nothing for those crushed in the mechanisms of their schemes. They'll use any cruelty necessary to manage you, to bind you into their schemes. They will manipulate you to death. And then, the banger of all bangers. The truest, most banger tweet ever. This current order of things is largely predicated on paranoia. Embrace discerning. Embrace boldness. Learn to question when and if you're really being watched. There are real dangers, yes, but there are many masquerading as danger for the gain of those who desire to simply control you. Let me tell you a, a loosely related fact. Did you know that statistically, a fake video camera is just as effective at preventing crime as a real video camera? Did you know that? Did you know that if you go on Amazon right now, you can buy for about 10 to $15 fake cameras with a fake blinking red light on them. They're just plastic with nothing in them and you can stick them to a wall and they look real. 
a lot of it is literally props, okay? And it is important for us to question the panopticon, to, to fight the cop in our own brain, okay? Because the paranoia, they get you, they trick you to police yourself at all times, to be paranoid, to be afraid of speaking out, to be afraid of being yourself, to be afraid of phantoms. It is theater. It is theater. So become discerning. Become bold. Question whether or not the cop in your head is telling you the truth. Yeah. So, uh, they're mad at my post because I'm right. There is just no, uh, there is just no, um, there, there is, I would love to see their actual argument. They don't have one. They go, you sound like a Metal, Metal Gear Solid too. Yeah, guess what, bitch? You calling me a Metal, Metal Gear Solid? Can I show you another meme? Real quick. Let me just show you another meme that these morons made. Real quick. Just real quick. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me just show you real fucking quick a little meme that these morons made. Ready? Watch this. Where'd it go? Where the hell'd it go? Is it this one? It's this one. Okay, ready? This is the meme. Here we go. Here we go. Right here. Look at this. See this right here? See this meme? It's like Destiny. Hold on. Here we go. Let's zoom up. Destiny upgrade. Vosh, go back. I said go back. And they put my head on the strongest Mewtwo form. On the strongest one! By far! Like, they don't even... They're so stupid. Oh my god, they're such bad memers. It, it, it would be... Oh my god. That's why I saved this meme, by the way. Because it's the biggest compliment I've ever received. Buff? Yeah, fucking Mega Mewtwo, bitch. Yeah, Mega Mewtwo Y. The strongest version. I think it's Mega Mewtwo Y, right? Yeah, so, uh, X, Mega Mewtwo X, whatever. Strongest form. Idiots. Idiots! I don't get what's wrong with security cameras. Okay. Humans go insane if they're monitored all the time. It's not good. You should not be monitored all the time. Humans should be able to live their lives without being watched by some magical ghost in the sky that can threaten to call the cops on you at any moment for any reason that they deem necessary. Surveillance state is a psychological plague. It is designed to make you docile and, uh, and chained so that you don't live freely so that you're afraid every time you step outside it is designed security the security theater is designed to install a cop in your head that makes you scared to do everything yes privacy is important privacy is a valuable mental thing okay and and that's why i have a problem with constant security cameras they don't even make us safer security cameras do you know do you know let me explain something okay a security camera records thousands of hours of footage that no one will ever look at and even if a crime occurs they can they will have to scrub through count dozens of hours to find nothing because the footage is always fucked just think about these things for a little bit okay white chocolate versus dark chocolate versus milk chocolate dark chocolate is the best do I like dead by daylight haven't Graffiti writer here based uh, Listen, um, uh, Seattle is covered in graffiti and it's fucking awesome. Dark chocolate is the best Dark chocolate is healthy and delicious and has all kinds of applications and delicious things. Okay. It's fucking good Okay, it's fucking good Best That's Final favorite. Fantasy and why is it nine? My personal favorite is seven um, And then but I love nine. I fucking love Final Fantasy nine. It's so good. So goddamn good. What are your thoughts on East of Eden? One of my favorite books of all time. I love East of Eden. East of Eden is a phenomenal book. Two of my favorite Zelda characters. Uh, the Mask Salesman and... Um, 
And Batman. what's that? Well, yeah, but I'm trying to think. I can't remember all the Zelda characters. There's too many. I, I like the... the oh, 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 Midna, 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 Midna. Midna, I like the fishing lady from Twilight Princess, and I also like um, the the girl who runs the balloon game, the one with the big poofy afro. She's oh, she's cool. awesome. There's yeah, Sheik cool is also super hot. Also, Sheik has the best music. Can we just listen to this real quick? Can we just listen to the Sheik? Uh... Sheik has, like, the best theme music of all of the games. Listen to this shit. I love Midna. Oh, it makes me want to cry. Here. Watch this, everybody. Watch this. Yes, me and an artist worked together to design that tattoo. This is a custom tattoo. No one else has ever had a tattoo exactly like this. Thank you so much, Jifrik. Da, 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 da. I agree, Posadas John. Da, 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 da. So good. Why wow, those booba portraits? What do you mean? The art in the background? I love this art. This is some of the best art I've ever collected. It makes me very happy. It makes me super fucking happy. It's great art. Yeah, some of it was. Oh yeah, this we have to fix the positioning of the lighting. We're gonna have to do some rearranging before I fully come back. But damn, today's been super fun. Wow, God, it's been so good. Oh my god, let's see. Oh yeah, this one is based. Yeah, look at this meme. Here, let me show this meme. What a fucking based-ass meme made by Posadas John. Look at this. Isn't that fucking wild? Look at that shit. Fucking true! Look, I haven't even played these games. So uh, they can't say I'm ripping off MGS, but I'm pretty based. I guess if I if I sound like I'm being written by Kojima, that's probably a good thing, right? That means I'm that means I'm goals. Um, goals. Yeah, I did the Punish Mama stream. You know, it's so funny. There is so much shit that people who are new to my channel have not yet seen that I have done. For two years, I've made some of the most banger content on this website, and a lot of people have never seen it. There is so much shit. So fucking cool. I did a Punish Mama stream. It's been good. Fuck. Yeah. Some good shit. Oh, oh my god. It's terrifying. This is the scene they're referencing. I know which scene they're referencing. They're they're Yeah, I know this one. That's the scene where they talk about the the memes or whatever. Do you watch the panel that Vosh was on? I did not. I did see the General Alden thing. That was fucking great. I'm not smart enough to understand it and thus it's bad. They're just stupid is what it is. They are stupid and lowbrow and they want they want to say that I'm a larper, but I'm not a larper because I actually live my values.